Hi everyone, it's Justine. To all those of you out there interested in learning about fashion, I'd like to show some of my favorite books on the matter. Paper books, because we spend enough time in front of computers already. There is no previous knowledge required to understand or enjoy these books. And I will link down below in the description all the detailed information where to find them if there is a more recent edition than the one I'm showing, etc. Let's start with an entertaining one. How to be Parisian wherever you are. It's a handbook by four French ladies who are public figures. It's a bestseller because it's easy to read and it's fun. It touches upon French cliches about style but without taking itself too seriously. If you enjoy my video series about French women, then you're very likely to like this book. The content is well structured and then you get tons of little thoughts like here in a snackable format. What you won't find in her closet. Three inch heels. Why live life halfway? <laughs> Logos. You're not a billboard. Here, sweatpants. No man should ever see you in those except your gym teacher and even then. Leggings are tolerated. <laughs> This page is pretty. They build color palettes with typical items, places and events in Paris. For example, Savon de Marseille, soap from Marseille. That's exactly the color I would have picked. Good layout, lots of pictures. All in all, it's a fun book. Just consider it social research. The next one is a little book of street style and fashion influences called Style Diaries. It is a directory of bloggers, some thoughts and outfits they would wear. I like to look at this kind of book for inspiration purposes mainly. For example, her, that's Susie Bubbles, British blogger. We get some facts about her and then outfits. What I like to do is to go on Instagram and look for those people to see in which directions they went since then. They are professionals, so there is a lot we can learn from them in terms of self-promotion and image. Number three and one of my favorite books, Fashionpedia. It is in fact a dictionary, but a visual one. Let's say you're looking for the name of a silhouette. Here you have an overview of the different silhouettes and what they're called. And you have overviews like this one for each topic. Outerwear, underwear, dresses, jackets, sleeves, etc. For example, dresses, what are the different lengths and types, and you get flats for all that. You also have accessories like bags or watches or any category you can think of. At the end, you also find chapters that are useful if you're creating your line or would like to. For instance, the name of the different fabric patterns, different types of seams, different ways to finish an edge. Very practical. There are two ways I use this tool. Number one, I have a shape in mind and I don't know its name, which happens all the time, especially in English. <laughs> Number two, I'm looking to design, let's say, a pocket and I want a repository of all existing possible pockets to choose from. I wish I had this book when I was studying at Parsons. It would have saved me a ton of research time. Next, we have another easy book to read about fashion history since 1900. If you enjoyed my video about the perfect body through history and the historical footage that's in it, then you'll enjoy reading this book for sure. It is full of archive pictures and it goes chronologically, which you see here, so you can really read it as a story. Fun times dancing in the 1910s. <laughs> 1920s, the garçon look, no waist. After World War II, Christian Dior's new look. Yves Saint Laurent's smoking for women etc. That's a book I read really chapter by chapter with a cup of tea and it was a pleasure. The next book is for you if you like to sew and try out things with fabric. It's one of my favorites of all times to learn techniques. It's called The Art of Manipulating Fabric and it includes things like ruffles, tucks, pleats and so much more. Here for instance you see all kinds of pleats and then detailed explanations on how to build them. Then you have pictures with the results, so you can compare. Here they teach you how to make stuff quilting. That's a fun thing to do, actually. I use pillow stuffing to do that. When I was at Parsons, my locker was full of that white fluffy material all over. It looked like I had killed teddy bears. Next, I love books that are released for fashion exhibitions. And the Metropolitan Museum in New York happens to have major fashion exhibitions every year. That book came with the one exhibition about Mute Chaprada 
and Elsa Schiaparelli. I know there are Italian people watching my videos, so I check the pronunciation before filming. Both are Italian women, but Schiaparelli lived in Paris in the 20s, while Prada lives in Italy today. By the way, that's probably the Italian nose you guys have been discussing in the comments below last week's video, right? The curators of the exhibition compared the designs of both ladies and found many similarities in their aesthetics. Both worked on making ugly beautiful, for instance. Prada is here on the left, Schiaparelli on the right, and then you get quotes and thoughts by them in a very playful way on paper. For example, Prada says, My spring 1996 collection was an exercise in elevating cheap and obsolete patterns into high fashion. The patterns recall trashy domestic textiles from the 50s, textiles that were used for curtains and tablecloth in suburban homes. The Metropolitan Museum has a great online shop. Have a look there and you'll find a ton of books like this one. They're all super high level, well curated and extremely inspiring. Last but not least, a tip from me to you. Magazines are also a great source of inspiration. I like to look at the ads and try to understand the insight or the thought behind the ads. For instance, I enjoy very much American Vogue. I think they are very sharp on the fashion spreads. French Vogue, a different perspective, same name, different ideas. I like British Vogue, German interview magazine, etc. In the country where you live, try to find a publication that you enjoy reading and that has good quality fashion spreads and subscribe to it. You'll save money versus buying it monthly and you'll get the inspiration delivered automatically right in your inbox. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. I'm glad if it helps. If you have any question left or a suggestion of a book that you really like, please feel free to comment below. I read all the comments as always. I'll see you Sunday and Wednesday again. Here are two more videos for you to watch until then. Take care. Bye bye.